Hello again. Nice to see you. My name is Alisher. I am an accounting and finance instructor at the strategic education, the learning provider. So today it's going to be the second lesson of ACCI financial accounting, and we're going to learn the regulatory framework. Subscribe to our channel. Stay with us to watch all the high quality videos so that you can achieve success in your exams. Today we're going to learn all about the regulatory system of IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards. The first thing we need to know is the accounting concepts and individual judgment. Accounting concepts are all the international accounting principles that are provided by international uh, bodies. We use these principles and our individual judgment to make our financial reports. In this course, we're going to learn international financial reporting standards or they may be called international accounting principles. We learn these principles. We learn how to use our individual judgment to make financial statements. So financial statements are made by the application of individual judgment and some accounting concepts. So we make our financial statements. For example, in terms of valuation of buildings in times of rising property prices, we must use individual judgment and we must use some accounting concepts, which we learn in the next lessons. The second case may be research and development. Should we treat it as an expense in the statement of profit and loss, or should we treat it as an asset capitalized in the statement of financial position? We're going to learn it in the ninth lesson. Stay with us, watch it. The next one, accounting for inflation, or the next one, brands. So brands, should they be considered as assets or not? Summarizing all this, we should say that there are not detailed rules in international financial reporting standards. There are only principles. So we use these principles to make our financial statements with our individual judgment. So the next thing we need to learn is the IFRS Foundation and related bodies. IFRS Foundation is the main body to set high quality, understandable and enforceable international financial reporting standards. And it has its related bodies, which we see in the next diagram. The first thing, the first body is the monitoring board, which is the main body to regulate IFRS Foundation and IESB. IFRS Foundation is the same as we described above here. IESB, on the other hand, is International Accounting Standards Board which has to make international accounting standards. IFRS reports to the monitoring board about its performance during the period. We also have IFRS advisory board, which advises IFRS foundation and IESB in such matters as uh, financial reporting problems or something like this. Another, another board that we have to consider is the IFRS Interpretations Committee. It is regulated by IFRS Foundation and it reports to the IESB. It helps to interpret some financial reporting principles. This is the structure of IFRS Foundation. In the next, we're going to learn where we use international financial reporting standards and how we use it, to what extent we need international financial reporting standards. So in the first case, they may be used as national requirements. 
in which case it is called full use. So if international financial reporting standards are considered as national requirements, we must use IFRS fully. In the second case, we see that some national requirements, only some national requirements are based on international financial reporting standards. And in this case, some standards are prepared by national bodies and some others are prepared by international financial reporting standards. So we mix them and, and make a financial statements based on this. In this case, it's called part use. So we are using international financial reporting standards only partly. The next case may be when we benchmark the companies in other countries where there are only their own national requirements, in which case we use it for investments. For example, Toyota, a Japanese company, may want to invest in Argentina. So it may want to buy an, a company in Argentina. In this case, if Argentina doesn't use international financial reporting standards, Toyota will want to value to analyze the company that it wants to purchase by international financial reporting standards. This, this is to say Toyota wants to see the company's financial report prepared in international financial reporting standards. So the international financial reporting standards may be used for investment decisions. The next case, it may be used by the regulatory authorities for domestic and foreign companies. So, so the regulatory authorities use international financial reporting standards to see the, their domestic companies and, and foreign companies. So in this case, it is used for investment policies for the, by regulatory authorities. Lastly, it may be used by companies themselves, in which case, it is used for reporting the parent companies. For example, Kazakhstan may not enforce international financial reporting standards, and Germany may invest, may have investment in Kazakhstan. For example, BMW. So BMW, okay. So this company, this German company may be maybe in Kazakhstan as a subsidiary. So in this case, this subsidiary should report to its parent, but it cannot report in national standards because German BMW, this is the parent company in Germany, does not understand Kazakhstan's national standards. In this case, the subsidiary situated in Kazakhstan prepares its report in international financial reporting standards, so it submits it to Germany, to its parent company. So in this case, the international financial reporting standards are used by companies for reporting parents. So it is used for reporting purposes here. This is all for today's lesson. Stay with us, subscribe to our channel and watch our videos. Thank you for your whole attention.